Welcome back to Dominating Your Investments. I'm Don Rinaldi. Thanks for taking time on this short video today to go over the Palantir stock. We're going to take it through the scorecard of Dominating Your Investments, see where it scores, and then we're going to walk through the business model of Palantir and their contribution margin. I think this is not talked about enough about this stock and what they're able to do as a business and over time, how they're going to expand their revenue growth as well as their contribution margins. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen out here. All right. So this is the Dominating Your Investments scorecard. Uh, still a work in progress, but it's getting closer to being fully complete. So in this prelim of, of how I score it today, we had these qualitative uh, and some quantitative features that we look for, right? And so you can see here, uh, I've already scored it, but let's go over what we've scored it and why. So the first thing is top dog first mover advantage. It's very important and being in an emerging industry, uh, something that's gonna really change and innovate and, and contribute to society, that's important to me when I'm looking at a company. We can then see, are they disrupting an industry or solving new problems? Companies that go after problems and solve them very effectively, grow their customer base, and they speed up their sales cycle as it's much easier to get a purchase order if you're able to prove out the actual solving of the problem and the ROI of the product, uh, which I think they do a fabulous job of this with their business model. Uh, proven CEO and founder-led leadership and long-term vision for the company. So First three categories here, we've given five out of five. That's the highest score you can get. We total this up by 130 points. That's the, the total. And uh, then we get our percentage. So definitely gave this a five. Alex Karp, uh, Steve Cohen, uh, Joe Lonsdale, and Peter Thiel, all still heavily involved in the company, uh, along with great COO leadership with uh, Cheyenne, uh, uh, well, three, two, one. Great leadership with Shyam Sankar as well. Um, just overall exceptional leader team. 90% of my stocks have founder-led leaders because they take care of their company. They treat it like their baby. They want to see it last longer than themselves living, quite frankly. Um, and, and so we definitely see that with this company. Does the company have over 10% insider ownership and executives pay uh, aligned with shareholders? So I gave it a four. Uh, it, it is very aligned with shareholders, but because of so much of the dilution uh, of shares uh, and sometimes options needing to be exercised, it, it can dilute the stock. And we've seen it kind of stay in that $20 to $30 range for quite a while this year. But overall, if, if the stock-based competition maybe just dies down a little bit, I would give that a five just because they are keeping their top talent. They are aligning to shareholders because you need to have that top talent to keep innovating uh, on this platform, uh, delivering a top-notch product that's 10x better than anything else. Uh, does the company have high internal employee satisfaction and support of the CEO? Now, I would have given this a five, say, six months ago, when we look at the Glassdoor ratings. Uh, with Glassdoor, they were in the high 80s and it was in the 80s for recommend to a friend. Now it's come down to four stars um, out of 464 reviews. Still really good overall uh, with recommendation to a friend, but I think maybe with just not hearing from Alex enough till recently, we've just heard him three different speaking engagements publicly, but before that, we really didn't hear a lot from Alex in the public and not sure what may be attributed to the lower ranking on this, but I believe in Alex and I, and I think overall as people do too. Uh, the pros here that very common answers that were given were you won't experience professional growth uh, more quickly than anywhere else at Palantir. Great environment for self-starters, fantastic benefits and love working with really smart people. They only hire the best of the best and that's why they have to lure them with that stock-based compensation to compete with Google, Facebook, Amazon. Uh, and then the cons. Palantir is an incredibly fast-paced environment. This can be great for single folks, but is hard on people with families. And I get that. I have two beautiful kids that are seven and four and uh, a wife of 12 years. I don't think I could work in this environment right now because 
uh, it does demand a lot to be with those customers, to be on site, to make sure that the use cases are proving out and the customer is getting that exponential return. Uh, so they're very customer obsessed, which I love. Uh, and then work-life balance is highly uh, project um, dependent. So, you know, you're not done till the project is successful. I mean, and that, that makes sense, right? So overall, I gave it a three. I, I deducted some points there, but overall, uh, I think that number will go higher as time goes on. Um, does the company have a large TAM and is it global? So you may want to give it a four here, maybe even a three, because they don't work with all the other different countries. Uh, they work with only the U.S. and all of the Western allies. Uh, but I think that TAM is so large from not only a business B2B perspective, but also eventually down the road with B2C. Uh, I do believe they'll eventually have a product like that. I gave it a five still because they are changing the way the world does data analytics. Um, has the CEO been with the company 10 plus years since founding? The answer is yes. Uh, does the company have a flywheel and reoccurring revenue business model? So we're going to dive deep into this one after we go through the scoring. And I think their business model is the best business model I have seen on a SaaS-based company, bar none, in any company. Um, and the reason why I'm so obsessed with the business model is because it's customer focused and it's really dependent on the customer's success for them to actually make profits and growth. And there's a methodical process to it. And we'll walk through that. Uh, the company has a sustainable and competitive advantage via superior tech, patents, moat, and brand loyalty. They have over 800 patents. So uh, I would definitely say that. And they've been operating uh, off of this with over $1.5 billion in R&D invested in uh, the company and growing over time in R&D spend. So I definitely would say they have the advantage here. Does the stock have past price appreciation for the last three years on the stock market or forever long has it been public? Or as it, sorry, forever long it's been public. So for the first year, it's you know only been public for one year, but it doubled. So, uh, and that was really, it went all the way up actually to a 3X, but then obviously it's come back down since then. So that definitely beat the market for the first year. So I gave it five out of five and beat it handedly. Uh, has revenue been growing over 25% annually for the last three years? Privately, like when you look at the S1 and you can see all the growth, the answer is yes, they've definitely been doing that. And they have projected to grow over 30% in the next five years. Uh, and they publicly stated that. And I, I personally think they're going to do higher than that. Uh, are the gross margins over 50, 70, or 80%? So the higher percentage you have, the better the score you get. So they're their uh, margins are very close to 80%. Some quarters they've been at 80%. So I gave that a five uh, and they're going to keep expanding. And we're going to show you how that works in the contribution margin over time. Uh, is the company a mega cap stock, large cap, mid cap, and small cap? So the reason I deduct for points for this is because if you are a mega cap stock, it's going to be much harder for your company to return exponential, you know, 20, 30, 40 X baggers because it's already so big. So a large cap gets a two points because it's going to have to execute not, or I would say close to flawlessly to really have that 10 X, 20 X capability uh, or have a very, very definitive moat. And I think Palantir is doing all of that right now. Is the company profitable? Do they have free cash flow? path to profitability or in the next three years. So you can see giving points five, four, three, two, one here. Um, I gave them a four because they do have free cash flow and they're growing that and doubling that, but they're not profitable, but they do have a path to profitability. So um, the stock-based compensation is really affecting that, but there's a methodical reason behind that and keeping the talent and keeping them long-term aligned to the shareholders goals and the company goals. Uh, does the company have zero debt? Uh, less than 10% debt, uh, debt to equity ratio or under 50% debt to equity ratio. So they got a five points there because they have zero debt, which I love, especially dealing with the tapering. Uh, interest rates may go up, like all of these different things happening right now. They will be able to withstand with their cash flow and, and what they're doing there. Uh, does the company have current value over two? Uh, yeah, they actually have over four plus. So what that means is the assets and the amount of that they have versus debt. Uh, they are well sustainable to, to endure any kind of 
financial challenges in, in uh, the economy. Is the company spending over 10% in R&D, over 20% of revenues in R&D? And they are definitely spending over 20%. So I give them a five out of five. I want companies to do that. I want them to continue to not be satisfied, to continue to innovate, to challenge themselves, to think of new revenue streams and new problems that haven't even been identified as problems uh, so they can have that first mover advantage, which Palantir is all about that. Uh, and then let's see here, is the company building out new revenue streams and will it continue to do so with more optionality? Already said that, five out of five for sure. Uh, you know, they have Apollo, is their edge AI solution that has now made their ability to deploy the platform so much faster, 5X speed uh, in deployment and the amount of days it takes to be up and running. Uh, they have Gotham, they have Foundry. Now they have Foundry for builders, for starter, startups. Um, I see that they're taking Foundry, which is really like four or 500 different products in one and starting to modularize it. We're gonna see things for crypto, uh, net zero carbon emissions uh, for, for different industries, different pieces of very difficult, challenging problems in the world. And they are really tailoring a, a kind of sweet modular type of approach for these specific problems. Uh, and if I'm a crypto company and Coinbase has the Palantir stack, uh, I'm going to want that stack because I want to make sure to, to keep up with, with everybody else. Um, does the company have operating margins over 35%? So the reason they don't is because of the stock-based compensation. So that's the way I look at it because that is factored in that. It's negative. It's very high negative. But overall, um, it is actually in the 30s without the stock-based conversation. So but we can't, can't play favorites. We got to you know shoot straight on the score. Can the customer continue to add new revenue streams and mutate into different valuation and TAM? I think this is one of its biggest strengths, especially with becoming eventually uh, a B2C type of environment, as well as their SPACs. I think that helping these startups and investing in them and getting shares and having Foundry give them that competitive advantage is going to pay off big. Uh, even if every not every SPAC is successful, I, I think it's, it's going to really pay off. Um, and in fact, I saw a... Uh, interview with the Databricks CEO on CNBC today. And he actually is talking about them doing that as well. They're already starting to do that. Customers and startups that are building off of their platform, investing in those startups, uh, really kind of modeling that, that soft bank approach, right? Uh, like a mini ETF. Can the customer continue to add new revenue streams and multi? Oh, we already read that one. Does the company have high net revenue retention? Uh, we don't have that actual percentage per se, but we can show in the business model revenues of their top customers spending so much more. I would, I would give that a, a yes. And do customers speak highly of it? I have yet to see a customer say, hey, this wasn't able to solve our problem. Uh, so I gave it a four. I didn't give it a five because we don't actually have the net revenue retention rate number. That's a big popular number with SaaS companies, um, but overall still a great score. Does the company have a strong brand appeal and awareness to the market? I gave it a two because if I go tell my friends, hey, you know, do you know about Palantir software? They're like, what are you talking about? Um, and, and you could even do that in IT. You know, there's some people, a lot of people who are used to the military uh, IT software products and consulting, definitely probably more familiar with Palantir than say on the commercial side. But I think that's going to change over time. Uh, does the company spend a lot in marketing and S&G expenses? Gave that a three. It was actually very reasonable from that perspective. And is the company considered overvalued by analysts? Uh, and that's a four. And, and I want them to think it's overvalued because it shows they don't understand the actual stock. Uh, I think more people are starting to understand it from an institutional base because you're seeing it go from 23% to 36% uh, in a very short amount of time. But overall, many people still call us a very overvalued stock and aren't buying it. Uh, from a institution perspective. And I'm okay with that because I'm getting in at a better price as they jump in later with, with the big money. Uh, is the company playing in a future mega trend or current trend in society uh, a, via AI, cloud, healthcare, genomics, 5G, space, et cetera? They actually have involvement in all of those areas. And that's the beauty of their platform and what they're doing around data analytics. It affects all of those different industries. 
Lastly, will this company and what it's trying to achieve keep me interested to follow the stock for the long term? And that's a 20 out of five, you know, like that is for sure. I am, there's always some news on Palantir and what they're doing. There is so much you can learn about their company, their culture, their product, if you go on their website. Um, and because I've worked in the SaaS business for so long and I am very intrigued with AI and, and innovation, this company will, will, I will never get bored to follow. Um, so overall, we added it up uh, here. So if I go here and total it up, uh, we got 112 out of 130 uh, and we got an 86.2%. Over 80% is why don't I own this? Um, I do own this. Uh, and this is very similar to Brian Feraldi and, and Brian Stuffel. Shout out to you guys on Motley Fool. I know you have your different scoring, uh, anti-fragile list and, and the Feraldi list. Um, you inspired me to come up with this because I was having trouble to identify who gets more of my capital and why. Um, so kind of following that same theme, I Palantir is my number one position other than cash because of some 401k stuff that opened up for me to where I can now do individual stocks. Um, but I'm going to keep building on Palantir and I'm not stopping. And then 70% uh, is more of a, uh, it's investable. Uh, anything below that's not. Um, so we're going to go through other different companies. I've actually taken another company through this uh, with STEM Inc., um, a renewable energy AI company. A very interesting one to, to follow. And uh, I hope this was very helpful. Now we are going to take on to the second part of the video, uh, which is going over their business model. All right. You know what? We're actually going to do that on a, uh, tell you, what, we're going to do that on a separate video because I want to keep these videos shorter. I want to keep them, uh, you know, more digestible for you. So we took it through the scoring sheet. That'll give you some things to go back. Fact check me. You know, this is all just subjective, right? You can get, have a different score for this than, than what I may have. Um, but we're already over 15 minutes in. I want to make sure to keep these videos a lot shorter. So we'll stop here. But then we will have another video on Palantir's business model and how uh, their acquire, expand, and scale phase really plays out into some amazing results for contribution margin down the, the long term. Um, so thank you again for watching. I know this was unedited, so maybe some bloopers and everything and just a, as far as getting caught up here in the spreadsheet. But uh, remember, it's never too late to dominate your investments. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. It helps me out. I'm trying to get to over a thousand subscribers and uh, 4,000 hours watched so we can start monetizing this channel and, and just allowing me to spend more time on this to uh, deliver more content for you guys. So thank you. Have a blessed day.